What's up guys? I am making a shot of espresso right now and I'm gonna go live with my friends at Juve. Look at that, is that beautiful or what? Actually, I'm making an Americano because well, it's that kind of a day. They're gonna request to join in a minute here. If not, I'll invite them. Talk some stuff about light therapy and some other cool stuff like that. While I pour this, there we go. One Americano, oh. I almost walked away and left the grounds in the espresso machine. Doing that is seriously not cool. All right, I'm gonna invite these guys. If you guys heard the news about my, uh, my New York Times um, bestseller came out, the news yesterday. Um, number five on the list. Thank you for your support of Fast This Way. I totally appreciate it. All right, I tried to invite Juven and it says, go live with Fierce Sadly. Sorry guys, view request. Oh man, not working. All right, let me see if I can invite Juve. Guys, give me one second here. Talk about light, red light, and maybe even talk about red light and fasting. Dave, there we go. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm great. I, I was just I, making coffee and chatting about books with everybody. I, I just got done with my uh, my bulletproof coffee. Nice. How's everything going? Things are going good. I know that people always have questions about light therapy, and uh, I've got one for you. Um, you guys make. Uh, some nice high-end uh, red light therapy devices, and you know a lot about it. So talk to me about red light and fasting. Red light and fasting. Hmm. It's a good question. You know, I I would say... Oh, what that means is I have no idea what the answer is. I'm going to think of something. But so it's not that smooth. Just saying. No, you know what? I, I got to think about it because it's not a question I get often. Um, but I would say is what an important point of like light just in general is, yeah. and this is really good for most people is to have a new perspective on what light really is. Light is actually energy. I know a lot of people look at light as that it's something like an illumination, right? It helps us see better, but light really is traveling energy through the air. Um, I mean, the technical term is electromagnetic mm -hmm. radiation. So it's traveling light. Um, and certain wavelengths of light have a, have a pretty big impact um, on, on your body and specifically on a cellular level. So red and near infrared just happens to enhance ATP production, um, which is adenosine triphosphate. So for those of that don't know what that is, it's, it's the energy currency of the body, right? So it, and when you're going through a fasted state, um, theoretically you're needing an energy source, right? Some, somewhere else other than food. So can, can light be that? I mean, it, it, it could be. I mean, you, you would probably think the more sunlight you get under a fasted state, you're gonna, your body's just gonna be in a better homeostasis state. Um, so that's probably what I would say, you know, without really knowing a lot of literature and seeing a lot of scientific studies around it. it it's interesting because in, um, it must have been in Headstrong, uh, one of my books, the one about mitochondria, um, I found research that says up to 10%, and that's quite unusual, of the energy that your body gets can come from light, but usually doesn't. And you don't want to be running on just light. I'm not entirely certain that breath area no. and light are a real thing. Although right. Where they are, but I think those are people who probably just uh, you know drink some coffee when no one's looking, as far as I can tell. Now, that said, we also know in study, the research I've done on light therapy over the last 20 years, that you can uh, measure and that extra electrons are getting put into cytochrome. Cytochrome C oxidase. Yeah, thank you, cytochrome C oxidase. Um, so you really are getting extra electrons. And the whole point is when you're fasted, you want your body to be making energy and you wanna feel good while you're fasting. So it will make energy from fat that's stored. It'll make energy from either external, uh, external MCTs and things like that, which are things I'm writing about in the book. But one thing that happens, especially for new fasters, is you start dipping in energy and then you're like, you just feel awful or you get like just kind of a, a whole body anxiety. And you put red light therapy over the chest, um, over the gut, or even um, the, the brain, you actually feel very noticeably different. 
Uh, I've even used it on my kids. Like it, it's a it's a real deal. So something's happening with mitochondrial stuff, whether it's directly electrons. I don't know that we really know, but I know during fasting it works really well. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting. I mean, that's it's interesting, and I it, there's very much potentially that effect, no doubt. And that's what's really cool about where just light is in general, specifically red and near infrared, is it's still so evolving, and oh. we know that it 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 provides a pretty uh, systemic effect throughout the entire body. And part of that is um, uh, the mechanism is it helps um, increase signaling pathways. So cells actually start communicating better. So like an analogy, you know, that that I will use is like a, if you look at like a, a battery, it can connect to a bunch of other batteries and it's working more efficient, you know? So that's something we actually educate heavily on. And, and you're mentioning it with fasting um, of relying on another energy source, but really just in humans in general, we're, we're in a really big out, out of state of balance and part of it and majority of the part is of our modern lifestyle right you know go back 100 years and yeah. the average american slept before they brought light in the home over nine and a half hours the average american slept then when you started creeping you know electricity in the home right and then you started bringing tvs in color tvs computers screens the average american now sleeps sleeps six and a half hours so that's a drastic lower now can you survive on that sure you can right but not if you're not getting the good quality sleep which i know you know we've had a discussion about that before i remember when, when we of, had a, yep yep if you're not getting that good quality hours, sleep like i get my six and a half hours almost every night and that's what makes you live longest if you're healthy enough to feel good after six and a half hours but mostly right. healthy right. and i've been using red lights for 20 years i mean it, it is a very noticeable difference in how you feel there's circadian effects and when you put it over your uh, like over your upper neck and back, you put it over your gut, put it over, <laughs> this will be a little odd. You put it over your nipples or over your genitals and watch what happens. Yeah. Red light increases levels of nitric oxide and nitric oxide increases blood flow. And when blood flow goes to areas that are, um, you know, pleasure zones uh, as well as other biological uses, um, good stuff happens. So it's, it's, it's very, it's one of those things people say, this can't be real. How could red light do this? Well, there's tons of studies, and the first ones are really only about 25 years old, which is why I started playing with it, you know, years ago. And since then, the ability to have, you know, small, portable, battery-powered, and very high-powered LEDs compared to the early days, it works well. Here's a question. Um, this is actually a really good one from um, The Real Deanna. Um, do I do red light daytime or evening? Now, I'm going to answer that, but I want your answer first. What do you think about timing a red light? You know, that's interesting. You could technically, you know, I hear, we see, I see on social media people saying, you know, time it with the sunrise or the sunset, because that's when red light and near infrared is most present. And that's actually not true. Um, it's when it's the most dominant, because the other wavelengths of light can't hit the surface because they're further away. So a la blue light, it's a shorter wavelength, right? And so if you look at the sun and how it'd be hitting the earth, those wavelengths aren't gonna make it. They're not long enough, right? They're not gonna hit. So you're just gonna get the red and near infrared. Um, red and near infrared actually is, is, is the most present even when it's, 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 it's midday, right? It's even, even though you're seeing blue. Ratio. What's that? It's, a low, it's the most present but lowest ratio of light. Correct, correct. Um, and so, I, what we tell what we tell people is just because of a busy schedule, there's not a bad time to get it in, right? Anytime you can get a healthy dosage of light in, in your routine, especially in the winter time, um, getting getting an adequate dosage is key. Um, I personally um, like to use it before bed because it really helps me wind down, especially um, the 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 ambient red that we our new devices can um, deliver. Um, there's an ambient mode, so instead of it delivering high power red, you can actually lower the setting. Um, and so it can just, your house can light up, you know, in red, in a, in a lower, lower dim setting. So I like to do it at night. Some people like to do it more right when they get up in the morning. I've gone back and forth with both. So, you know, just to be honest, Dave, we've seen people mixed reactions. Some people, they feel a little bit stimulated before bed. So they like to do it more in the morning. Yeah. Um, you know, so it kind of depends on the individual basis. When you look at circadian biology, um, there's three things, and I, I went really deep on this because um, you you know like we're we're friends, uh, but my True Light company, or sorry, True Dark, the the glasses company. Yep. Um, I I found the studies, and it turns out it's intensity of light, 
and its angle of light and color of light. All three matter for circadian timing. So when people are using the juve before bed, if it's overstimulating, here's the hack for that. Don't shine it in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. right. So when I do it, I'll put it like over my gut or over my chest, and then I put a blanket over it, right? And you can't do it for too long because, you know, lights get warm, but it can just be something that blocks light, right? And then what you end up doing is you end up getting the dose without exposing your eyes. And even if it's red light, which is generally the lowest, that spectrum doesn't mess with you much, but super bright red light is still too much. Yep. Like in, in my showers in the house, I have two lights. I have the normal light above the shower, and there's another one with a red switch. And that's just a circadian time. So if you get up in the morning, take a shower, there is a higher percentage of red in the morning. That's not therapeutic. That's just circadian timing. But what we're doing with light is therapeutic doses of light, right? Which can, as a side effect, have circadian stuff. So if you guys using the juve, just don't shine it in your eyes. And like, you'll find it doesn't overstimulate you at night. And if you put it over your thyroid, it may also overstimulate you. And that's a different effect because it can actually even grow organs, <laughs> not the juice specifically. No, no device is allowed to grow organs without a permit. Um, but if you were to shine a red light over your thyroid gland, it may upregulate your thyroid function. And you, and, and you could, if you want to do more of a full body, like, like Dr. Hamblin, uh, he's on our scientific advisory board. Um, he actually uses the near infrared to help. He finds it helps induce his sleep, right? So near infrared's invisible. So you're not going to have that same issue because of, of, of the brightness. Um, I, uh, I definitely am a fan of the infrared as well. It's good stuff. In fact, I, I used that on my brain. That was the first one I used. Um, first light therapy I did was, um, a very powerful near infrared led on my brain. And guys, you should watch out if you're going to like really go heavy on that stuff. I put it. It was in the very early days of experimenting. I put it over my language processing center. This is not a juve. This was a like a little pill bottle, like hacked together thing. Uh, I put it over my language processing center. One little spot, way similar to the part of my brain for longer than I should have. And for the next like three hours, I spoke in garbled words. It was the weirdest thing. But ever since then, I feel like I'm smarter. Oh, I'm kidding. I don't know if I... How many years ago was that, Dave? Oh, that was, that was at least 10, 15, something like that. Wow. Um, yeah, the very first LED device for the brain was made on a Yahoo group, and the guy sold 200 of them. And <laughs> his brain red and infrared light. This is a true story. That he deleted the group. He's like, guys, I'm, I've fixed my depression. My brain works better than ever before. Now I'm going to go to med school because I'm capable. And he deleted everything because he was worried to affect his medical license. <laughs> Isn't that too funny? That's so hilarious. You can that do it. Hilarious. And I do find, though, um, putting um, a juve like over the back of the head, it, it, some of it does go through the skull. I mean, that's just how red and infrared work, and it's probably good for you, uh, which is which is good stuff. Yeah, I think so. And I, I mean, if you go back and 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 this is, I, I like to educate on this too because there's such an education curve when it comes to red and near infrared because it right it right away, at least for me, the first time I heard of it, I was like, this is gimmicky. There's no way light can do this, right? Um, but really. It's, it's really just how much we're exposed to this light naturally in sunlight. You know what I mean? And people always yeah. tout vitamin D as, you know, that, that's all that's the important metric to look at um, from sunlight. And it's actually the very littlest that actually gets through the atmosphere. Only, only about five to six percent of the wavelengths that get through is in the UV spectrum. It's so potent, right? If so much got through, it, it would fry us. Um, and so, you're, you're, you know, the highest irradiance and actually... I looked at this with a researcher, Dr. Kleber out of Brazil, the highest irradiance that will hit is in the red and near infrared spectrum, which makes a lot of sense because that's the infrared is the warmth you feel from the sun, right? Because infrared contains heat. We know that from near infrared, there's a teeny bit of heat to it, but also infrared, right? How many people have been in an infrared sauna? You're getting heated by those wavelengths of light. It, it, it's, it's totally true. And what we're doing, is we're saying, oh, this specific wavelength, when we take it out of the spectrum of sun, it has a strong effect. And if you mix it in, it, it's kind of like, think about what's on your plate, right? You have some mix of proteins, right? And some of them might be, oh, I don't know, um, sarin, the nerve gas, which is a plant-based protein and bad for you. You might also have some spider venom on there, which is an animal-based protein. Therefore, animal-based proteins are bad for you. Or, oh, holy crap, different proteins could do different things. And different... It's like, who would have ever thought, right? So with light, it's the same way. So you can, and this is one of the big er areas for biohacking, the definition, change the environment around you and inside of you so you have control of your biology. We're tuning the light signal 
that's picked up by our visual system, by our timing system that's different than the visual system but sits in the same place, by our skin, by our mitochondria, by other parts of our cells even. Our DNA is apparently light sensitive. It makes one photon every 40 seconds. So there's all kinds of cool stuff going on in there. And we're like, oh, what if we just like add a bit more red? It's like, I do stuff in addition to using the direct like red light therapy, just to look kind of weird. Actually, I can show you better with this. So I have this amazing light switch from Amazon, right? And if you look behind me at my cool um, skeleton back there, that's actually, here, I'll, I'll get closer because it's Is fun. that real? Of course it's real because after all, every crocodile has gold teeth. Oh, know? that's awesome. But look what's sticking out of there. It's some cheap red light bulb. But the reason <laughs> I do that, actually this one isn't even on my switch because it broke. Anyway, so at night it looks like this, right? So this is not therapeutic light. This is circadian light, right? But Quite often during the day, in fact, I, I do this during the day. You guys are getting a weird tour. But this is how important light as a nutrient when you mix it up is, right? So up there, you see that red light there? So I have a little bit of red light kind of doping my area because I'm still looking at a screen, even though I have my screen dimmed and all that stuff, which means I don't have to wear um, the glasses that I make when I'm at home because I have halogen light, which is more like sunlight, right? So this is just ambient stuff. And that's how important the mix is. And then when it comes to therapeutic doses, right, we've got concentrated stuff near your skin with you. Then same thing. If you'd have a bright blue light, it would totally have a different effect on your biology, just like eating a bunch of corn syrup versus eating, you know, a bunch of bacon. They're different stuff. And neither one of them is perfect. And neither one of them is probably all evil because I'd rather have corn syrup and starve to death. I just you, actually I'd rather... You're dead on, Dave. You're dead on. And that's where we are with light. We're still discovering what different wavelengths do. We're still discovering what does green do, right? Green is more associated with blue and, and stimulate. But what does yellow do, right? What does orange do? What does purple yep. do? We're still discovering that. Just like you go through the 90s or, or the 1900s, we were discovering vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin D, you know, and that's only 100 years ago. You know what I mean? So that's what's really exciting to see that there's so many benefits to red and near infrared in particular, and virtually no side effects, especially when you deliver it at, at a safe dosage. So it's just, again, we're talking about, we talk about balance. And if you just give your body what it needs, it's amazing what it can do. You know, it's, it, it's the most advanced machine on earth our bodies are. And as long as we just give it what it needs, it, it, it does all the work for us. It, it will do the work. And that's why some of the, the transhumanism stuff where people are like, hey, I um, you know, I want to cut off my arm and put on a, you know, a laser. I'm like, maybe you should upgrade and make full use of the hardware you have before you actually like replace it. Yeah. And you know, stuff. There's so much untapped stuff inside our brain. We probably don't need to go in and modify the hardware. That's a lazy approach to doing it. We got to get better. At that. But talking about data, you look at what happens with collagen thickness and red light. <laughs> and there's lots of studies. There's a lot of these in Superhuman, my anti-aging book, before Fastest Way that just came out. Um, and in that book, I talk about increasing collagen thickness using exactly the spectrum of light that you guys have in the Jew, right? And you do that and you actually get less wrinkles and you get thicker collagen. And as you age, your collagen thickness declines over time, unless you do something about it, right? And what do you know? Red light is something you can do about it. So people notice a huge difference. That's why we've got it at Upgrade Labs. Um, down in LA, I'm opening one up here in Victoria. So we treat people with red light, with something called Juven Groove, where people like vibrating red light for mitochondrial stimulation. And it, it works. And so I'm, I'm a believer. No one actually knows that I'm 74. I mean, look at the skin. Dave, you look like you're, you look like you're 40. people <laughs> 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 But that's just the outside appearance, though, right? Th like, th that's just, like, the, the light working internally and showing the outside appearance, you know what I mean? And I think we see that big effect on the skin because it's working on a cellular level internally. And um, a big part of that is the in increase in blood flow. You mentioned nitric oxide. And, in fact, we just released another article on our site called Less Ice, More Light. And, in fact, the, the, the saying behind that is, you know, the rice method, right? Um, that that has yep. been around forever with an injury. Well, that, that gentleman that actually, um, his name's escaping me, but he's actually walked that completely back now. Um, and in fact, he, he's saying that if you're icing more than five minutes, it's actually detrimental um, to, your, to, to an injury. And a big reason yeah. why, and I'm sure you know, 
is inflammation is a very natural process in the body, right? I know everybody that they hear that word and they think, oh, you want low levels, but you actually want a balance of inflammation in the body. There is good inflammation. And, a, and, and the good inflammation is if I roll my ankle and that swells up like a balloon, that is my body protecting that and starting to fix the problem. And a blood flow is huge importance to that. So what does ice do? Ice actually halts blood flow and reduces the swelling, which is actually the opposite of what you wanna do. You wanna actually get the inflammation there, get the blood flow there, and you're actually gonna heal quicker doing that. And there are actually studies with red and near infrared showing that. It, it's because when you have acute injury, in other words, inflammation because something is wrong, it's usually really beneficial. However, it can go over, we see that in COVID, right? You know, oh, there's a, a cytokine storm, right? And you see it in some injuries where no blood gets in there. And then you might want to actually put some ice on it. But to regularly ice it, just because you're supposed to, it actually totally blocks the body's healing effect. And so if you were to use red light on an injury, and I've done this, um, I've had, you know, all sorts of different injuries. You put red light on, they heal twice as fast as they're supposed to. You do it post-surgically and they're like, oh man, something's, something's wrong uh, because the, the tissues grew in over the stitches. Like what did Jelly's taken out last week? You're like, because you put them in four days ago. <laughs> and, and that sort of thing happens all the time because we can just give the body what it needs. So I, I'm a huge fan of, of red light because um, it's not talked about enough. And in the early days of, of biohacking, like creating the, the community, launching the movement, I was really, I would just put little tidbits out there about it because I'd use it. But honestly, if I just stood up and been like, red light is really the bomb. They would have just said, this guy's nuts. Cause already I'm like putting butter in your coffee. This guy's nuts. Right? And, and so far I've been proven to be right multiple times, uh, including on intermittent fasting. If you guys have seen the latest book, if not fastthisway.com, but what what I will just tell you is red light is a very important part of your biohacking conversation and it's come down in price compared to where it was a long time ago. So you guys have high quality stuff and I think it's worth putting in your biohacking arsenal. And if you get nauseous a lot or you get headaches a lot, you'll like that. I, I think too, Dave, this is a really interesting study to mention of, and I want to hit on a couple things here. Um, just how, how it works, because there, there was a study that was recently released that was sent to me that um, they were shining uh, red on the wrist, an artery in the wrist, and um, it was relieving pain in the ankles and feet of someone that had neuropathy, right? And so oh, yeah. how could it be doing that? It's kind of like, how, how the hell could it be doing that? And if you look at last year, just early 2020, they released a study that they discovered there's free floating mitochondria in your bloodstream. They yep. just discovered this now. That's, that, that's not bound to a cell. And for those that are wondering, well, what is that? Um, before then, mitochondria had only been found in, in, in a cell, bound in a cell. These are free floating and they found millions of them floating throughout your plasma and the bloodstream, right? So theoretically, if it's enhancing mitochondria function and that's then going throughout the body, that could be an explanation of why there's a massive systematic effect that we see when, when using red and near infrared light. We see benefits um, and these are new studies, so I, you, anyone can go out and look for them. Um, but gut health, microbiome, um, you mentioned cognitive function, um, you mentioned thyroid. You know, we have people report to us increases in testosterone, um, same um, uh, benefits for females and their hormones, bringing a balancing effect. So we see these, all these wide ranging claims um, and reports. And that's why people see this and they're like, man, this has got to be a scam. How could one thing be doing that? But that's what the data is showing us. This is how one thing does that. It's called mitochondria because they pretty much do everything. Like they're the puppet. Yep. Make them work better. You sleep better. You perform better. You think better. Everything works. That's the, the core bulletproof diet, bulletproof lifestyle. Everything there is about making the mitochondria better at making energy. And what mitochondria do that most people don't know, they actually have something called quorum sensing, which is the same algorithm that we use in some of the more advanced like Ethereum uh, and some of the Bitcoin stuff. Um, where like, how do we, how do we know that we can trust this? How do you have all these distributed things all kind of voting? They do that and they can actually move around. They have a little shuttle, like little elevators inside neurons where they can move. Oh, we got to have another power plant over here. Let's move it over here. So it only makes sense. They'd move around inside the body. And when you're using red light and you're actually getting more mitochondria energy or better functioning mitochondria, which is another word for less chronic inflammation. Those, those are like 
flip sides of a coin, what you end up with is better performance at whatever system needed an upgrade. Because with yep. the button, it has all these different levels of systems in it. And it very elegantly says, well, I don't have enough energy or enough nutrients. So I'm just going to take the least important one and knock it off. And then it'll slowly degrade. And as soon as you get enough energy back in, it's like, oh, I got enough. I'll make some testosterone. So, you know, guys, put the juve light on your balls and just watch what happens. It works. Dave, There's studies. I, I'm glad. I'm really, really, really glad you said that because that's exactly what we educate is. Think of that. Think of, and a good way to say it is, too, is like, think of what happens when you're cold. What does your body do to compensate to keep your body in a homeostasis? You shiver to, to keep the body's core temperature up. Same thing when you're hot. What happens? Yep. You sweat your body will compensate. That's fine for a short period. But if you start going long stretches without, um, you know, without giving your body what it needs, it's going to compensate more and more and more. And that's when we tend to see more chronic inflammation creep in because the body's been compensating for so long that it, it, it's, it's functioning. And that's kind of the last stuff it'll give out, right? Um, so it's really interesting that I'm glad that you said that because it's, it is all about balance. And I know that's kind of I don't know, some people are like, well, what does that even mean, right? And even if you look at some of the research, um, even before COVID, of how, how, how do you maintain a good immune system? What they'll tell you is a healthy, balanced lifestyle, right? But what the hell is that? You know what I mean? <laughs> My favorite thing is people are like, oh, it's all about moderation. I'm like, talk to me about cyanide. It's not about <laughs> moderation. Some things are just bad for you. <laughs> good for you. And some things, in fact, the reason I wrote Fast This Way is that fasting Intermittent fasting is good for you, but too much intermittent fasting is just like too much keto, and it's just like too much plant-based diet, right? And there's someone from oh, just can't eat vegan. No, eat vegan for two weeks, but then have a goddamn grass-fed steak and go in and out, in and out, and you'll do much better, right? So just because something's good doesn't mean more is better. And then, so balance, no, it's about cycles, up, down, up, down, where the average might be moderate, but you do not want to fall for that that thing about balance. So what you want to fall for that thing is, how do I make my cells better at making energy all the time, no matter what's happening in the world around me? And if you do that, you will be able to survive just about anything that comes your way. And you'll know you have enough energy to handle whatever life brings you, even if it's not a virus, if it's you know a, a breakup, a car accident, it doesn't matter. Like, do you have resilience or do you not? I think red light's a part of that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and, and it is, you know, you, you see, because it's natural in nature. I mean, if, if you took the sun away, the entire universe would be gone, right? So that's just how important light is to everything. And you hit on just ambient, how much that controls and can stimulate how we operate throughout the day. Light really controls almost everything. I mean, it really does. Yep. Light is a, it's, it's a, a, a nutrient and it's as important as food. And right now, most of us are just getting the corn syrup of lighting through our monitors. It's not a, it's not a good thing. Well, thank you for sharing your knowledge and, and your work with Juve with everybody. Guys, um, you can follow Juve Social here, and I'm sure you guys have cool offers on there uh, for everybody. And if you are not in the fasting challenge, I will touch on red light in it almost certainly, at least in some of the Q&A, fastthisway.com. And if you... Uh, if you do that right now, you can join 28,000 people doing a fasting challenge for free. I'm just teaching my book. And if you haven't purchased fastestway.com, thank you if you do it. If you would like to re leave a review, I'd be more grateful. And like I said, go to follow Juve Social. It's right there in the Instagram thing at the top. So just go in there and click Juve Social, follow it, and I'm sure that they'll share, you some, share some good stuff with you. Yeah, guys. And also, um, if, you're, if you're interested in learning more, head to our website at juve.com, J-O-O-V-V.com. And while you're there, if you're interested in, in, a, in a red light therapy device, we are running a, a crazy sale right now that we've never discounted um, our products this much. Um, we're running a closeout sale for our generation two devices. So you can save hundreds right now if you're interested in picking up a panel. Awesome. I will see you later. Have an awesome, well-lit red day. That's right. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> All right.